Native navigation is one of my favorite things in NativeScript. Being able to navigate from page to page using native transitions and also being able to open modal dialogues, native modal dialogues in iOS and Android. Now I've been doing a few videos here on native modal dialogues lately and just talking about the different techniques you can do with them and how to control them. But there's one thing that's always kind of bothered me and that's being able to resize modal dialogues in iOS. You can do this in Android, but on iOS you weren't able to do it until a recent release. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at two new things about the modal dialog control in iOS. One is being able to dismiss the modal dialogs using gestures as of iOS 13. And another one is being able to control the size of the modal dialog and have the modal dialog display as a popover in iOS 13 on iPads. That's coming right up. So a couple of weeks ago, I created a video on how to show a modal dialog in iOS using a different kind of transition, a blur in transition instead of the regular slide up transition. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. This video kind of takes off from where we left off in that video. So I'm not gonna explain everything about the modal dialog and how it works. In this video, we're gonna go just a little bit further and take a look at some other options that are available for you to control the modal dialog on iOS. Now, if you're using NativeScript Angular or NativeScript View, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see a video about uh, how to create native modal dialogues from those frameworks. I did publish the modal dialogue in Angular checklist on nativescripting.com in an article there, so you can go find that. But I can also make a video on that and on NativeScript View. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see that. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing so you can get videos like this and tutorials about NativeScript. Now, in this video, we're covering two topics. One is taking advantage of the new technique that you can dismiss a dialogue using a gesture in iOS 13. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really simple. And two is we're going to take a look at how to change the size of the modal dialogue in iOS and how to make it look like a pop up. And I'm also going to mention a couple of gotchas there that you have to be careful and watch out for when using combinations of those settings. So let's take a look at that now. We're gonna start out with just a blank template, but I've modified it slightly, removed all the comments, and simplified the markup. Here is a page with just one button on it, this tap button right here, and it will open up our modal dialog. Let's go to the code behind and implement that on tap handler. We're gonna export a function called on tap, which is gonna get some args of type event data. We need to get that view, that button that was tapped. So that's gonna be an args.object. You've seen me do this here many times before. I'm gonna cast it as view because even a button inherits from view. So I'm gonna call it generically just view. And we're gonna need that in a bit when we call show modal. So that's gonna be view.showmodal. You can call the show modal function from any view, by the way. It doesn't have to be from a page. So you can say view dot page dot show modal but you don't have to you can say view dot show modal and it'll just open up the modal dialog on the page that the view is on automatically so the first thing we need to provide to this function as a parameter is the module name this is going to be the modal dialog itself it's just going to be another xml and code behind optionally code behind file we're going to call it modal and we'll define that in a second if you've seen my recent modal dialog video on this channel then You've already seen this code. We need to provide options here as well, which I'm gonna create in a second, so opts. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna create a const called opts, and this is gonna be a modal dialog options. And actually it's typed as show modal options. I like to type these things right away. That way I get IntelliSense, so I can press control space here and see exactly what is available in this object. So what do we need? Context is gonna be null because we're not passing any data to our modal dialog, this is just a demonstration. Well, let's define a close callback, which is just gonna be in line here. And all I'm gonna do is just say console log modal closed. Finally, we're in iOS here, so we're gonna define some things for iOS. And this is where the interesting part comes in. We'll get back to that in a second as well. I want you to see how this behaves by default first. And full screen is an optional parameter. Now, by default, it's set to true. And I'll leave that at true for a second here as well. So now I have enough to open up a modal dialog, but we don't have the modal dialog defined. 
let's go ahead here to our file system. I'm going to create a file called modal.xml and also modal.ts for the code behind. Now, since I've added these two files, sometimes you just need to rebuild your project. So that's what I'm going to do here as well in the background while we continue working. Now, I've already defined these in a previous video, so I'm going to just paste the code in here and not make you watch me type it all out. Modal XML is just going to be a page. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. This is just a page, but the difference here is that it says shown modally will be the event handler. OK, so shown modal is the one we have to define. And I also define the background colors aqua so we can see a difference when the modal dialog opens. Otherwise, everything inside here is going to be the same as any other page. You're going to define layouts, you're going to define UI. And that's what we're doing here. So I have a label says modal on it and I have a button that says close. We're going to need to define this handler right here that says on tap close so we can close the modal dialog. And these handlers are defined in the code behind. So there's modal.ts, which is the code behind. I'm going to paste in the code here and go over this with you. So here we have shown modally data. So on shown modally on the page will trigger this function when it's shown modally. And we're going to get shown modally data, which is going to have args on it. And close callback is going to be one of those. So this is going to be called when we tap the close button. We're going to call that close callback. All right, I'm going to save this file and let's try this out. So I'm going to hit tap. It's going to open up the modal dialog using our standard animation. By the way, this standard animation can be changed. I showed you how to do that in the previous video about modal dialogs and how to change that display animation. And also our close handler works as well. And it closes the modal dialog. And on the console, we should have a message that says modal closed. And yes, we do. OK, now as of iOS 13, the iPhone actually lets you open up modal dialogs and allows you to close them using a gesture, a swipe gesture. And the way we handle that is simply by going to full screen property and setting that to false. If we set that to false and save this, I'm going to go ahead and click tap here and you'll see that the modal dialog opens up only part of the way. It's not a full page anymore. So now you can still click this close button, which will close the modal dialog, but you can also drag the modal dialog and you can drag it down and out of the way. So you can see that little effect happening here where the interface becomes like a card interface where the background kind of shrinks a little bit and the status bar gets faded out. But if you're dragging this out of the way, the status bar eventually fades in and the modal dialog disappears. So that's on iPhone and all iPhones can do this now starting in iOS 13. But there's an additional thing you can do with iPads. Let me get my iPad in here. Here's the iPad simulator. And if I tap on this right here, you'll see that the modal dialog comes up on iPads. This modal dialog is not a full screen by default. Even if you set full screen property to true, it's still not going to be full screen. But what's really cool about the iPad is that you can present that modal dialog differently. So for example, I can change the height here to 200 and the width to 200. And now you can see that we have a difference in the way the iPad presents that modal dialog. You can see how small it is now. You can still dismiss it like that using a gesture, but you can also change the size of it and you can still interact with that modal dialog, which is really cool. I wish they offered that on the iPhone as well, similar to the way they do on Android, but that's a limitation from Apple, from iOS. They just don't want you to be able to size the screen that small, I guess. What if we change this to 20 by 20? Let's just as an experiment, it's going to be really tiny if it even shows up, but I haven't tried that yet. So let's see. OK, so there is a limit to how small you can make it, probably the size of the contents, just so that the contents are not too small. And there is one more thing I want to show you. Let's set that height and width back to 200 by 200. And there's one more thing that's called presentation style. Now, I talked about one of the presentation styles in my previous video on blurring the modal dialogue instead of just having it slide up from the bottom of the screen. You can check that video out if you want. And I also show you how to use the TNS platform declarations so that you can use iOS types in TypeScript. And that would look something like this UI modal presentation style form sheet. 
I've already installed TNS platform declarations. That's why this works. And I also get IntelliSense. So if you don't have that, you can check out that video on how to do that. And I also have a separate video on how to install TNS platform declarations for both iOS and Android. But these are just enums, right? So all we need to do is just know the numbers associated with each one of these. And that's in the iOS documentation. So if you go to this page here, search for UI modal presentation style and go to the developer documentation for iOS, you'll see that this is actually an integer and it's an enum. And here are all the different options that you have. And these all have numbers associated with them. So for example, let's try popover. Popover has the number seven. So we could just say presentation style popover, or we can just say presentation style seven. And this will look really interesting. Now on iOS, on iPhone, it still looks exactly the same, but on iPad, it's gonna look different. And oh, we need to actually remove height and width in order for presentation style seven to work. This is a little bit of a quirk that I personally don't really like because it's hard to determine what combination of these will actually give you the results that you want. But if you're using presentation style of seven or popover, you can't have height and width. So I'm gonna remove those. Presentation style is seven. And if we take a look at the iPad, you'll see that now we have a popover. It's a nice little dialogue looking type of popover and we can close it using the close button. So there's two extra things for you, height and width on iOS and yet a different presentation style that you can use. And you can check out the other presentation styles that are available on the documentation site. I'm really curious about this one. Over full screen is five. So let's try that one and let's see if that'll actually cover up the entire screen on iPad. And yes, it does. So if you wanted a full screen modal dialog on iPad, you can still do that as well. All right, folks, that's all the new settings I have to review today. If you want to see those checklists in NativeScript Angular or NativeScript View, the modal dialog checklist, then leave me a comment down below and I'll make those videos. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any of the tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here with NativeScript. And I will see you in the next video. Happy NativeScripting.